So it's been about a week or so since we were last down at the plot. Um, a few things have changed. So we've now finished off the uh, netting on the uh, brassica cage. So let's have a look inside and I'll show you all around it. So now we've got all this EnviroMesh. It's actually uh, the EnviroMesh Ultra on here, but now that shows the full grow space in here. Because um, we did have those black nettings across. So again, this is the four different compost types base that we're doing a trial on. But now this is a lovely, great big growing space for us to actually use for the new season. So that is really good and really pleased with that. And the other thing that we've done at the top of the plot is we put up the new sign. Now I've had this sign for about six months and uh, I promised myself until we got all the major structural stuff done, we wouldn't put it up. But now we have our new plot 35A. So I've had that since about September. Um, and the rest of the plot is looking all ready. So we're sort of ready to grow. Now there is a couple of things I want to get done today down at the plot. Um, I want to get the polytunnel sorted out. In here I want to get all these remaining plants, sort through these, take the good ones, put them up in the cold frames. I want to extend that bench a little bit. And down here we have some, when we got the cold frames, we got a load of um, this uh, polystyrene foam board. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to create a little box on the new bench down there and start off some initial seedlings in there. So I'm going to crack on and get all this moved out. Um, and the other thing I want to do is plant some of the uh, Anya potatoes. So I've had these uh, Anya potatoes, these small salad potatoes, chitting at home. Um, as you can see, they've got quite big um, chits on them now. Um, that's a bit early to sort of, I wanted to try and wait until end of March to get these in. Um, but they're quite small potatoes, obviously, because they're salad potatoes. And a few of them are starting to get like a little bit soft and squishy. So um, I'm going to hold off on the other potatoes until uh, the end of the month. Um, but I thought as we've got quite a big tray of these, at least we'll get like half of them in now um, um, so that they uh, survive. Because I think if they spent another two weeks on the side chitting, um, they're more likely to dry out and soften up. So we'll get those in some buckets today. So that's all the uh, spinach transplanted in. Um, just give that a good water, let it bed in before we start picking off of that. And then we put all the uh, mustards and everything else in here. And hopefully with a few plants in here, we might see if that makes any difference to the temperature gauge um, that we've been monitoring. Um, but now that's the uh, polytunnel cleared. So let's go and sort out those pots. All right, so let's get these potatoes planted. I've done my usual um, trick of like, in here is just some compost and some, a little bit of a handful of blood fish and bone and a handful of potato fertilizer. I've done my normal trick of chucking it all in a bucket and then tipping it from one bucket to the other to get it all mixed up. There's a few bigger woody bits in here, but I'm quite happy with that because that'll mean that when we water it, those woody bits will actually retain a little bit of the moisture going in. So let's get a good load of compost in the bottom there <clears throat> and then I think what we're going to do is for these potatoes they're only small salad potatoes so we'll put a layer of three in there and then give them a covering and then we'll put another layer of three in the top and I won't fill the bucket right up, I'll let them come through because they're only small potatoes. And therefore, for my main crop, or my larger potatoes, what I normally do is I just don't bother with this earthing up. I just put them in there and let them fill up to the top and then just top off with straw. And then let them actually come on up through all by themselves instead of keep earthing them up. I find if you, if you're in buckets, if you have to keep earthing them up all the time, you, you risk damaging the stems and the potatoes are more than happy to actually make their way to the surface. Um, but with these small potatoes, there's not as much strength in the tuber um, as the other ones. So we'll keep it shallow and we will let them 
grow it through, get a bit of leaf, get a bit of energy into their, themselves. And then once we've done that, we'll earth them up. But as I say, for the main crop potatoes and the larger um, earlies and second earlies, generally I don't bother with, um, bother with earthing up. I just put them in, fill the compost up to the layer that I want and then just top off with straw. Um, and that's always worked. So um, we'll carry on doing the way we do. But as I say, for these ones, we'll give them a little bit of a chance to actually get some greenery on before we actually earth them up, just because they are quite small and there's not as you could probably appreciate there's not as much energy in one of these little tiny potatoes as there probably is in one of the sort of larger ones so we'll put those in there and we'll give those good covering over and we'll just tip the rest of that around the top and that'll be fine and then we'll go and get some straw to top that off with There we go, nice bit of straw on top. Get some of these old seed heads out of there, we don't want any wheat growing in there. Um, and that'll go in the polytunnel, and as I say, it's a bit early really, um, but as I say, these the potatoes are getting quite squidgy and soft, so I wanted to get them in the ground. And we'll keep them in the uh, polytunnel, and if there's any risk, more risk of frost, um, once the uh, growth's come up, We'll just fleece them over or we'll cover them over in the polytunnel until they're ready to come. So we'll get down the polytunnel, give it a good water, and we'll do one more bucket of those. All right, it's Sunday morning, and we're back down at the plot to uh, finish off this uh, polystyrene box. Um, hear any banging in the background? Um, that's just a clay pigeon shooting that happens over the back, so don't worry about that. Um, so let me show this polystyrene box that I made up. So this is the box, um, I had this polystyrene from the cold frame, that's, that's what they were packing in. And then luckily um, I got this like little portable soldering iron, which is ideal for like sort of like putting on and melting along this, because if you try and cut or break it, you get polystyrene bits everywhere. So I've just made up this little box with a little bit of sheet in there. It's big enough for a whole load of trays in there. Um, and I'm going to pop those up and have that as my uh, early uh, seedlings growth. So I'm going to put some seeds in there, some brassicas and some beetroot and everything else. Um, just as a, a few of each, just so that it's an early set. Then if anything comes of them, um, that'd be really good. Um, but if not, I'll have to put some more in a little bit later. But I thought would like to get a few uh, seeds going. Um, as I say, if they, if they succumb to the cold and the frost, um, albeit we'll put some more in later on anyway, um, but we thought we'd get an early start on that. Um, there's a couple of other jobs I wanted to get doing. There's a few of the beds that uh, need topping up. So some of the beds that we uh, filled up the other day have now settled down. So just gonna top those ones up with uh, some compost and rounding the uh, fruit cage, there's the strawberry bread around there that actually needs uh, some topping up so we're going to get on with that. Um, but in the meantime let me show you what I've got as an idea for um, some frames and how I'm going to do my archways. So I want to put some archways in for things like beans and squash and stuff like that um, and I'm going to put one in either side of here and then probably another three along the bottom. So I've been thinking about how best to do this. Um, and we've got some of this flexible plastic um, strip. So my thinking is, is that what we'll probably try and do is strap, screw these poles onto the side of the bed, like that, and one there, one there, and then find some way of attaching this to this and have it over there like that and then just strap it across. So I'm gonna give that a go and see how that looks. So here we have it. So it's not too bad, it's a bit, it's a bit wobbly, but it was, we've got some high winds coming this week, so we should leave this one up and see if it actually survives the winds and see. But I think with a bit of netting or mesh across here, um, 
that will actually just firm it up a little bit. Um, and I think that'll be a good job. So hopefully, if this holds up for the wind this week, we'll build the others. But for the time being, we'll leave this one in place. Um, I might just put some netting on it and then we'll see how it goes. So that's me for the today. Um, I've got, still got some odd jobs to do, but I'm sure you don't want to watch me uh, filling soil into beds and various other different things. Um, but next time, that means that we will be, we've got everything pretty much sorted now. So next time we'll be starting some planting. Um, as I say, I'm going to plant some, uh, only about four or five seeds of each different varieties of the broccoli and some uh, um, beetroot and um, some cabbage um, and some kale and various different bits that we've got. And I'm just going to plant uh, sort of four or five um, cells of those and save the rest of the seed for later in the season. Um, and if something comes of them and we can use them later on, that's fine. If they actually uh, succumb to a late frost and everything else, that's fine too. It's just really just sort of covering our bets. Um, as I said in previous videos, um, what I want to try and do is sow a few seeds of all the different varieties that we're doing in various weak successions, not only so that we get a succession crop, but also that means if we get a really, really mild end to spring, we've got some plants ready to go. And if we get a really harsh end to spring and a lot of frost, we've still got some more seeds that we can put in later on into sort of April, May and June to actually uh, pot on. But for me, that's all down on the plot today and uh, I'll catch you again next time. Cheerio.